I want to answer a question really fast. If you're taking notes, you can write these things down. I'm not going to be before you um, long, just really fast. Um, one o'clock again. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that, one o'clock, we're going to be here. Go over some instructions. We already have the presence, and we're going to deliver the presence to the people's homes. I called my house yesterday, and um, Grandma answered. Daughter wasn't there, and Grandma didn't know what we were doing. She said, what are you doing? I said, well, our church has adopted your daughter, your grandkids, and we've adopted them to bring them gifts. And she began to cry over the phone. She goes, my daughter needs a lot of help this year. She goes, when are you guys coming? I said, we're coming tomorrow. She goes, oh, my gosh, I have to get the house ready. I said, don't even worry about that. We're just going to give you some love today. And so I just, I just can't wait. So let me, let me give you this. Man, we kind of answered already today, but why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come? Here's number one. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says it like this. But when people keep on sinning, it shows they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. That's a whole other preaching, that first part of the scripture. Here's the second part. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah, give Jesus a round of applause. He came to destroy. <laughs> Pastor, works, what does that mean? Destroy the works of the devil. What is works? It means the devil's strategies, his temptations, his plans, his bondages, his lies, his deception. Jesus came to destroy the works, the plans of the devil. The word destroy means this, to ruin as if by tearing the shreds. To put out of existence, to demolish the point of no return. I'm here to give you some good news today. It doesn't matter what you're facing, any addiction you're facing, struggle you're facing. Jesus has destroyed the works of the devil. Has to prove it. I'll prove it right now. How many in this auditorium, maybe you're watching this online. How many in this auditorium, Jesus set you free from some sort of an addiction? Can you stand up for five seconds and remind the devil he's defeated? Stand up for five seconds. Come on, give Jesus a bigger shout of praise than that. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Glory be to God. My dad owned a restaurant, Burrito King, in Fontana. And it was, it, was the, it was really like the first Tom's because he sold everything. We sold burgers. We sold burritos. We sold everything there. But I love this shirt. On the back of the shirt, it said, it said this, if you leave here hungry, it's your own fault. Right? It's a restaurant. You should leave full. You're in this room today. I have good news. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. You don't have to be addicted. If you're struggling with alcohol and drugs and unforgiveness of lust, um, pornography, whatever addiction you're facing today, Jesus, I'm going to declare it right now, Jesus is going to set you free. Give Jesus a shout of praise. He sets the captives free. How many want to be 100% free? So Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Here's number two. Jesus came to erase our past and forgive all of our sins. How many had a past before Jesus? How many made a lot of mistakes in life? I made a whole ton of them. I'm thankful that Jesus came to forgive me of my sins. 1 John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. Ephesians 1, 7, I like the way it says it here. He is so rich in his kindness and grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your kindness and grace. That he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to erase your past and forgive you of all of your sins. Before the pandemic, um, and we're going to get back to the prisons. Uh, open up those prisons in Jesus' name. But we have a prison ministry here, and I, I try to go with them as much as I can. Because in my heart, I'm just an evangelist, and I just want to—I I, just want to—I just want to remind the devil he's been defeated, and remind people, hey, you could have some freedom. But I remember 
right before the pandemic, we were at um, Tehachapi. I'm preaching, and it's a bit, it's a nice sized auditorium. You could fit anywhere from about, I don't know, three to 500 men. And they pack them out. To Hatchby Prison, the chaplains there and the prisoners, they do a phenomenal job leading um, this worship service. We had about three, 400 guys. And as I'm preaching towards the end, I'm getting ready for the altar call, a guy just stands up, you know, he's in the back, and he's just staring me down. And I said, man, what's wrong with this guy? And everybody is seated. So I'm waiting for him to leave, right? He's standing up. Okay, well, just leave, right? Getting ready for an altar call. And he's just staring at me like this. Big dude. I said, man, this is getting kind of scary now. <laughs> Either he's going to rush me, which we have protection there. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I do the altar call, and he, I, I give an opportunity for people to get saved, and he walks out. I tried to do an altar call as fast as I could, and I ran out to go, to go meet him. He was outside the sanctuary. And he's standing outside the sanctuary the temple there in Tehachapi Prison, I said, what's going on? Because everything you were saying just got me really upset. And the Lord began to give me a word of knowledge. And I said, well, God's showing me right now that you're really hurt. I don't know if somebody died in your family, but you're dealing with a lot of hurt. And this hurt really, it put, it put a number on you. You just couldn't get past this hurt. And he, 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 he began to lift his shirt. I said, oh, my gosh, where is this going now? <laughs> he lifts his shirt, and I can't say it. It said the, bass, the bad word, the, okay, bad word, the, the bomb, the F-bomb. It said the bomb word, cancer. I said, who died of cancer? He said, the only woman that I loved. My grandma, she took care of me. My mom and dad got divorced. They left me as a kid. I went to the gangs, and my grandma was the one woman that I loved. And she got cancer, and she died. And now I'm in prison for life. I said, what did you do? So I can't get in details. I'm in here for life. I'll never get out. And I told him the gospel. I said, man, I have good news. He goes, what's the good news? I said, Jesus came over 2,000 years ago. And one thing that he does, he destroys the works of the devil, but he came to forgive you of all your sins. Everything you've done, even to the point of what you did, you killed someone. Jesus Christ came to erase the past and forgive you. As soon as I said that Jesus wants to forgive you, he starts bawling like a little baby again. And right there outside that temple, to Hatchby State Prison, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a shout of praise. That's why he came. He came to set us free. He came to forgive us. And number three, Jesus came to save and rescue us. How many are thankful that Jesus reached down and rescued you? You're in this room today. You're at home watching. Jesus' hand is going forth. And he wants to rescue you today. He wants to pull you out of this dark place. He wants to pull you out of this pit. He wants to pull you out of this despair. Look at the scripture, Luke 4, 18 and 19. This is Jesus talking. Again, Jesus came to save and rescue us. This is Jesus talking. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, and he sent me to announce release, pardon, forgiveness to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, and crushed with tragedy. Whatever you have been through in 2020, whatever you have been through in your life, Jesus, the rescuer, is here today, and he's ready to lift you up. Out of that place, out of despair. Out of that place when you were abused as a child and nobody knows. Jesus said, I came to save you. I came to rescue you. And all you and I have to do, it's a free gift of eternal life. Pastor, how is it free? Jesus paid the price on the cross. He paid the ultimate price. 
so that you could be rescued, so that you could be saved. Luke 2, verse 10. But the angel reassured them. This is the angels talking to the shepherd. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. This word Savior in the Greek here is sozo. It means saved from hell, saved from the devil, delivered from danger, saved from destruction, saved from ruin, saved from sickness. I have good news. Even somebody here today, you're sick, and you're going to leave this auditorium healed in the name of Jesus because that's what Jesus came to do. And number four, write this down, and we're done. What did Jesus come to do? He came to give us a home in heaven. I thank God planet Earth is not my final home. This coronavirus got me going crazy. I'm done with this. I, want, I can't wait to get to heaven. I can't wait to meet Jesus. How many can't wait to that glorious day? I can't wait. And there's only one reason why Jesus hasn't come back. He's waiting for a few of us, a few of you guys, a few of you gals, people watching to give their life to Jesus. Bring me up that rope if you can, Mark, really fast. Bring me that rope. I want to give an uh, illustration. Francis Chan did this like, I don't know, five, six years ago and just stuck in my head ever since. Whoa. That, I thought they wanted me to sing. <laughs> jingle bell, jingle bell. Leave that for the choir, man. Got a long white rope, and the end of it, the last couple of inches, is red. Everybody see that? This red piece here represents your life here on earth. It's tiny. If you live a 30 years, that's tiny. If you, leave, if, you live, if you live 60 years compared, now the white piece represent eternity. The Bible explains it this way that our life is like a vapor. We're here for one second and gone the next. But this is what, en what the enemy likes to do. He wants us to get fo focused on this little area here and disregard eternity. Now this life here, yeah, it's important. Raise a family. We do great things. We're, we're a part of a great church or but maybe you're here today, you've been so focused on your life this year, the last 10 years, well, I got to get ahead. I got to do this, and we, and we go there. I got to get the new house. That's good too. Okay, we're there. But what about eternity? Have you dealt with eternity yet? And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to save us, and he prepared a place for us in heaven. We're just passing through. The Bible even says this, we're like foreigners, we're like aliens. We're here for one second, we're just passing through. This is not it. I live for eternity. I raise my kids in the house of God because I'm focused on eternity. We're passing out 300 gifts today because I want to remind these people about eternity because they're barely focused on this. I don't have a present. I don't got no money. I don't have a job. That's okay. We're bringing the love of Jesus. And today, maybe you're here. Thank you so much. Maybe you're here today. You say, man, pastor, that's me. I'm fo focused on this, but what about eternity? We're all going to die. COVID, if you're a believer in Christ, you're here, you're not going to die one day before your time. I'm not saying don't practice social distancing. I don't know. We, we do it. I'm saying don't wear a mask. I got my mask right here. I got my mask. We're practicing this. But all of us one day is going to die. And I think with COVID, if it did anything, it's reminding people about the eternity. Man, my life is at stake. If I died, 
where am I going? I want to ask you a question. You're watching online. Are you saved? Have you put your faith in Jesus? And there's only one way to heaven. A lot of religions will say, well, this God and this God, you can go to heaven. No, 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 that, that's all false. That's the biggest lie on planet earth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. It's not about a church. You cannot stand before God when you die. And, he, and if he asked you this question, hey, why should I let you in? You can't say this. Oh, I went to the greatest church in the world, the Way World Outreach. Jesus is going to say, that was a great church, but rah, bah, wrong answer. <laughs> well, why should I let you in? You, we can say this. Well, I'm a good person. Good according to whose standards? How many has ever lied? Let me say that again because 70% raise their hands. How many lied? Has ever lied? Okay, 100%, right? How many has ever cheated before? That's the only, I say it right now, sorry God. That's the only way I graduated college, I cheated, sorry God. I was horrible. I was horrible. Horrible, I say, horrible. How many's ever lusted before after something or someone? Yeah. Before Jesus, we're all perfect before Jesus. <laughs> yeah. How many's ever stolen something? I used to steal that crazy. And I was a dumb thief. I'll never forget, I went to Walmart. My parents had money. Stupid thief. I was collecting cards back then, and I stashed a whole bunch of cards in my pockets, all in my pants. <laughs> Stupid. I would just ask my mom, she would have bought me the cards. She would have literally just bought them for me. I get caught, and just, <laughs> I've stolen. How many have stolen, lied, cheated? You know what that makes you? It makes you a thief. You ever lusted? That makes you an adulterer. You understand, we've, we're good according to what standards. The only way we're good is when we accept Jesus as Savior. Now you're good. Now you can stand before God and his blood covers you. So here it goes. Why did Jesus come? It's all on point number two. He came to save you. He came to rescue you out of hell. And with a crowd this size, there's a lot of people still they need to give their heart to Jesus. And don't play church. Don't act, well, I got my stuff together. No, don't do that. Just leave it there at your seat. I ain't got my act together. I'm addicted here. I'm addicted there. My relationships are no good. I need a savior. I need someone to rescue me. So if you're here today, you're saying, Pastor, I need a rescue. I'm not saved. I want Jesus to forgive me. Of all my sins. I don't want to get caught up in this little life here. I want to become eternally minded. I want to really focus on eternity. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. If you say, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven. I want to make sure if I died today, I would go straight to heaven. Not because of a religion. Because now you're going to put your faith in what Jesus did. So if you're saying, that's me, I want to be forgiven. I want to make sure if I died today, I would go straight to heaven. This is what Christmas is all about, for Jesus to save you and rescue you. So I want everybody to stand up at this time. And if you're saying, Pastor, that's me. If I die today, man, I am not 100% sure that I'm going to heaven. I haven't given my life to God yet. I want Jesus to forgive me. I want to accept what Christmas is all about. I want Jesus to rescue me. Maybe you're here today, I want to be free. You're addicted to drugs, you're addicted to porn, all kinds of things. You say, man, addicted to marijuana, and you're saying, I'm done. I want Jesus to set me free. I'm going to count to three. If that is you, you want freedom. 
If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, if you want to be forgiven of all of your sins, when I count to three, don't let nothing hold your hand down. This is you in eternity right now. One, two, three. Right now, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I see a hand there. See a hand way in the back. See a hand there. See a hand there. See a hand way in the back over there. See a couple hands there. See one, two, three, four, five hands there. I see a hand over there in the blue jacket. I see you way in the back. I think I see some children way in the back, way over there. If you just raise your hands, I want you to come forward. Come meet me here in the front. It's so, so good to me. up here I want you guys at your seats to do one more thing as I count I want you guys to do one more thing I want you to ask the person you're standing next to or sitting next to I want you to ask him this if you were to die today do you know where you're going they say I, I don't know you say come on I'll go up there with you I'll support you with your walk with God take 30 seconds while I count one you guys came up two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven. Fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Fifty-three people. Man, this is the greatest Christmas ever. Now, still coming. Got a few more coming. You coming? Fifty-four, fifty-five. Still coming. Come on, church. Give them a big round of applause. This is it. Now, really quick. We got a lot of people up here, so we might need some leaders to help. Just to get some information. We got two more coming. The one there, yeah. If you're a leader, just to maybe get information, just come on up. We, we just need some help. We got people right here in the middle. They're not covered. So any extra leaders here, or maybe even coming for a while, you can just kind of gather some information right now from those. And Man, this is awesome. That's why this church is open right now, for souls to be saved. That's why we're open right now, okay? We got our mask on, we're being safe, but nothing is more important than this right now. This is it. It all comes down. That little red piece, we're here for a second, we're gone. The eternity is the big picture thing. That's what we're looking at. So maybe if you're at your seats right now and you're thinking, man, I didn't go down there. Man, what am I doing at my seat? It's okay. You could just say that prayer right there at your seat. Don't let this moment pass you by. You're at home right now, you're watching us, you're at work, you're driving your car, driving a truck. You're hearing us from another city, another state. Say this prayer right where you're at. You're going to get saved. Now, everybody up here, you're going to say this prayer. After that, you're going to hang out for two to three minutes. That's it. The prayer partner here, the altar worker, they're going to pray with you and then sign you up for your next step. Pastor, what's my next step? Next step is baptism. Next step is starting at the way classes. So that's your next step started at the way classes in those classes they'll teach you about baptism then we'll get you guys baptized all right every head bow every eyes closed 
And if you want to join us at 1 o'clock, we're going to have a blast here at 1 o'clock taking presents to people. Every head by every eyes closed. And I didn't say the time. You want to come tomorrow, 5.30? 5.30, we'll be here in the morning with Channel 11. Every head by every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. I believe that you came to this earth to give me salvation. You died on the cross so that I could be forgiven. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am saved. I am born again. And Jesus set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions. For you have destroyed the works of the devil. I am free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You guys, the 23rd Wednesday, our Christmas Eve service, it'll be online. Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 23rd, it's going to be our special Christmas Eve service. It will be online. And then next Sunday, the last Sunday before 2021, Pastor Marco has a great word for us. Don't miss it. We love you guys. If anybody needs prayer, you can come down and get some prayer. And remember this, if God is for you, who could come against you? God bless you guys.